O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. Stand up for your country, particularly on this day. 23 years ago, we all know what happened. I'm going to get into that a little bit later on. Anniversary of the terror attack. But first, of course, I'm really talking about the debate. Unfortunately, most people who are talking about it are not being honest with you. We will be tonight. Brutally honest, because that's what I do. We're not going to spin. We're not going to evade. We're not going to do any of that. I'm going to lay it out for you. What exactly happened and the repercussions of it. Okay? I got a flood of mail today from people who uh, are very concerned about this election coming up in November. So first of all, nobody won. Those people saying somebody won, somebody didn't win, it's ridiculous. Nobody won on the merits. And that's because both candidates, all right, did not do what they needed to do to convince the majority of Americans that they would win the presidential election or should win it, okay? And I'm going to get into micro detail on both the vice president and the former president. That's number one. Nobody won. If you were going to vote for Donald Trump before the debate, you're still going to vote for him. And same thing with Kamala Harris. Harris did not hurt herself, okay, by her massive evasions, because she came off as somebody who could articulate a thought, unlike Joe Biden in June. Trump hurt himself a little bit, not with his supporters, but with people who were maybe considering him, because he went into areas that don't help him. It's as simple as that. So, Let's get specific in the talking points memo. Number one, I have a message of the day on BillOReilly.com. We hope you check that out every day. You don't have to be a member or a subscriber. It is there. It lays out exactly the tone of the debate and what happened. The most important things that I zero in on is that for every question specifically asked, Vice President Harris dodged every single one. Yet the moderators never once pointed out the dodge. President Trump dodged twice on how he would deport undocumented migrants, totally dodged it, and what his vision for better health care is. Well, he dodged twice. Harris, by my account, dodged a dozen times. And that includes not being able to define Gaza, Israel at all, or Ukraine. Okay, so let's go very slowly through it. The first soundbite I want to play you is when it comes to the economy, which is the number one issue. Roll it. When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid, and I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. Doesn't answer the question. Doesn't even come close to answering it. Yes or no? Americans better off or not, in your opinion? Mew it in. Let it go. Now, me, you know me. The debate rules say you can't interrupt the candidate for, what, 90 seconds or what? But after, if I'm your, I go, you didn't even come close to answering that question. Are we better off? Do you believe Americans are better off now or four years ago? And then I would throw in, if I were the debate, say, your campaign theme is a new way forward. But why do we need a new way forward if the Biden-Harris administration was so effective and so good. Why, why would we need a new way forward? Okay. Second question. All right. This is about um, abortion, which was gleefully embraced by ABC News because they knew that this is Harris's strongest rhetorical issue. Go. Vice President Harris, I want to give you your time to respond, but I do want to ask, would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. No, it doesn't answer the question. The protections of Roe v. Wade 
all right, don't go into late-term abortions, okay? Now, in New York, where I am, you can abort an unborn child up until 10 minutes to birth, but in some states, you can't, all right? Roe v. Wade was based on a privacy decision by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court now says that privacy condition doesn't really exist in the Constitution, so we're throwing it back, as the Constitution dictates, to the states to make their own decisions. But that's a fairly straightforward question. Do you support any restriction? Doesn't answer it. Okay, that's two. Number three. All right. The Afghanistan screw-up, which Americans, according to the polls, think is horrendous how the Biden administration, with the support of the vice president, of course, pulled our troops out of Afghanistan, leading to a massive debacle. Roll it. Well, I will tell you, I agreed with President Biden's decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Four presidents said they would, and Joe Biden did. And as a result, America's taxpayers are not paying the $300 million a day we were paying for that endless war. That's true. Americans were paying $300 million a day. It's incredible. That's true. But that's not the question. Okay? The question wasn't ending the war. Trump wanted to do that. Trump was negotiating with the Taliban to do that. The question was cutting and running and leaving $100 billion worth of weaponry in the hands of terrorists. Doesn't answer. Doesn't come close to answering. All right? One more. But you're getting the gist of it. I know you are because this is an intelligent worldwide audience. So Gaza, right? Very hot topic right now in this country. Roll it. What we know is that this war must end. It must end immediately. And the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Yeah, everybody knows that. How are you going to do it? Well, well, no, we're working around the clock. How? What? Why? Never get that. Oh, we're working on it. Now, does Trump have a incisive, here's how I would get a ceasefire? No. Trump's um, portfolio, or what he says, is that it wouldn't have happened if he were president. Not quite enough right now, because it is happening. No, you want to be fair on this. So it was clear to me as an American that Kamala Harris was not going to answer any questions specifically at all. None. And that's why she doesn't do interviews or press conferences. Because if you were paying attention, as we were, you saw it. No matter how simple the question was, she was going to answer. But she did have a theme. And the theme was all of the problems, open border, inflation, Overseas chaos were Trump's fault. Go. And what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. What we have done and what I intend to do is build on what we know are the aspirations and the hopes of the American people. Aspirations and hopes. She's going to build on those aspirations. My aspiration is pretty simple. All I want is the president of the United States to answer questions honestly. Is that too much of an aspiration? Okay, let's go to Trump. So Trump, number one, had to know he was walking into a three against one. Because ABC News and ABC Network, Disney, CEO Bob Iger, they want Harris to win. It's clear they want it. There's not one conservative that works in the AB News hierarchy. Not one It's a total black ball. When I'm out confronting the presidents, am I going to get on Good Morning America? No. No, I'm not. Are they going to interview me on This Week, Martha Raddatz? No. Used to. But once Trump came on the scene, anybody who didn't hammer Trump was banned and banished across the board on CBS, NBC, and ABC. Across the board. Trump has to know that. Now, the two moderators, David Muir, he's not an ideological guy. He's just not. All right. The other one, Lindsay uh, Davis, is an ardent liberal and she despises Donald Trump. But they didn't write the questions. 
They were written by people behind the scenes, producers. Okay, so Trump walks into that and he knows that the ABC people are going to try to sandbag him. And they do on this incredibly ridiculous story that Haitian migrants are eating dogs and cats somewhere in Ohio, which is internet generated. There's not one shred of evidence that exists. And of course, ABC throws it right at Trump. Go. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. I just want to clarify here, you bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, All I've this, seen people on television. Let me just... I've seen people on television. You don't, you don't do that. Not in this dangerous age we have, Ukraine, and Gaza, runaway inflation, people paying 20% more for the essentials of life, open borders. You're talking about some fiction on the internet? And it doesn't even matter if it's true. Okay, so what? You got some psychopath doing crazy stuff? That, that's the centerpiece of a debate? And ABC knew that because they, before the debate, all right, questioned the people in Springfield, Ohio. They knew they were going to do this. That's called a sandbag. Okay. Um, then they wanted desperately, both the vice president and the two moderators at ABC, to take Trump back to 2020, the election where Trump claims there was fraud because the polls show Americans have had enough of that. They don't want to hear it. Trump takes the bait. Go. If you look at the facts, and I'd love to have you, you'll do a special on it. I'll show you Georgia, and I'll show you Wisconsin, and I'll show you Pennsylvania, and I'll show you. We have so many facts and statistics. Okay, maybe that's true, but it doesn't matter now. <sighs> um. One of the strong points, though, and I, as I said, Trump won the thir first 30 minutes and then he got into the dogs and cats and then the whole thing collapsed, was that Trump defined the vice president as being Joe Biden. Go. She is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says. She is Biden. The worst inflation we've ever had a horrible economy because inflation has made it so bad Mr. and she President, can't get away with that. Thank you. Your time is up. I, I want to respond to that, though. I want to just respond. Briefly. Clearly, I am not Joe Biden and I am certainly not Donald Trump. And what I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country. Okay, fine. But she is Joe Biden because she supported every single thing he's done. You didn't see Mike Pence run around when he was vice president of Trump saying crazy stuff. Pence was very locked down. Kamala Harris denies for years there was even a problem at the southern border. For years denied it and blames Trump for inflation. And she is Joe Biden. That was a strong point. Now ABC drops the bomb. OK, Muir again. So there are softball questions that when you favor a certain candidate, you feed to the candidate. Trump got zero softball questions from Muir and Davis. This is the softest of all. Muir goes in, <clears throat> asks the vice president about Trump's statement that if reelected, Trump would investigate the alleged fraud in 2020 and put the people who did it in jail. Roll it. This was a post from uh, President Trump uh, about this upcoming election uh, just weeks away. He said, when I win, those people who cheated, and then he lists donors, voters, election officials, he says will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences. 
One of your campaign's top lawyers responded saying, we won't let Donald Trump intimidate us. We won't let him suppress the vote. Is that what you believe he's trying to do here? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. So Mueller knew she was going to well. I mean, <clears throat> is that what you think he's trying to do? Trump should have said, hey, David, do I get a softball like that? Do I get one of those? You gave one to her. Can I get one? Can maybe you point out that she was appointed to help on the border and did nothing? Maybe you can point that out and let me well on it. You see, this is all very, you've got to see it. And I've been in the business long enough to know what that is. A huge softball coming in. And ABC did it on purpose. So let's sum up. Donald Trump didn't help himself last night. Kamala Harris didn't hurt herself last night with her crew and uninformed voters, in my opinion. Trump did not define her as clearly as he should have because he got diverted into areas that make him look foolish. And that's the memo. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD. 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. All right, YouTube address. I'm doing a new commentary tonight. It'll be up. Um, YouTube.com slash O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. YouTube.com slash Bill O'Reilly. One word, Bill O'Reilly. So I'm going to do uh, some little known stuff on the debate on a YouTube channel, which is apart from the No Spin News. Let us go to the mail. Thomas Burke, Clearwater, Florida. What happened to Trump in the debate? It was terrible and outmatched by a lady who was very well prepared. I see it differently. I don't think she was very well prepared. I just think she didn't want to answer anything and started BSing. You know, that's not a hard thing to do. That's not being well repaired. prepared. Uh, Rusty Morris, La Jolla, California, nice town out there. Harris baited Trump in personal attacks, which made a mistake of reacting to. Neither candidate answered questions. Rather, they immediately redirected their comments to different and rambling commentary. I would have liked more precision from Donald Trump last night. I don't have any expectation that Kamala Harris will ever answer a question. Uh, Todd Marbles, connected in New York. Pains me to say this, but people watching the debate are going to look at Kamala and compare her to Biden's performance and conclude she's presidential. Yeah, maybe the dimmer of the people, maybe. She didn't hurt herself. I'll, I'll grant you that. Donald Nace, Lakeland of Florida. I'm a U.S. vet. Was ashamed listening to all the nonsense being said between them both. These are the candidates the American people must choose to be our next leader. What say you? I say that's the way the system is. That's what I say. All right. I can't vote for Kamala Harris. I don't ever do that, by the way, but I can't because I know what's going to happen. I knew what was going to happen when Biden got elected and it all happened. I mean, call me clairvoyant. Bill Henderson, Peachtree City, Georgia. Um... Donald Trump is a chaotic thinker, can't deliver concise statistical blows to an easy target. Kamala Harris delivers the same tired lies that have been 
many times. I don't know about chaotic thinker. Trump can get very laser focused when he's making a deal, but he's certainly not disciplined in the public arena. I think that's fair. Judy Lorenz, New Brighton, Pennsylvania. I'm looking forward to reading, confronting the presidents and getting it from my grandson, Luke. He's a senior in high school. If Luke reads Confronting the Presidents, he will ace any American history course. Washington to Biden. And it's fun to read. These urchins will like it. And we have the audio. If they don't read, just get the audio going. All right. We want you to check out our political memorabilia, three great mugs. Team Normal. Okay. Not Woke. That's me. No Socialism. No Socialism. All right. We also have the, if you become a premium or concierge member on BillOReilly.com, you get Confronting the Presidents free. That is a great deal. Or any of my other killing books. Okay, your choice. It's a fabulous deal. Check it out. Do the math. Okay, where did they do not be a varlet? V-A-R-L-E-T. Back with Ronald Reagan getting hammered in a moment. Hey, O'Reilly here, and you know I'm a proud American. That's why I rely on my Patriot Supply. Their Mega 3 month emergency food kit comes packed with 33 varieties of fillings, delicious foods like creamy rice, old fashioned Italian spaghetti. It also comes with a bonus protein kit that has diced beef, flavorful chicken, beans, nine different fruits, and vegetables. This emergency food kit provides 2,500 calories per day to keep you well-fed and ready for anything. It is my duty to protect my family without waiting for handouts. We don't want that in the O'Reilly home. And that starts with food you can depend on to make you independent. So please go to preparelikebill.com right now. Save 300 bucks on your mega three-month emergency food kit. It ships fast, free. So please go to preparelikebill.com, save $300 on your kit, preparelikebill.com. Have you ever been buried in debt, piles of overdue bills, threatening phone calls, and it just won't stop? Done with debt is your way out. They have developed aggressive new strategies to end your debt permanently. Done with debt tirelessly negotiates with your creditors to lower or even forgive what you owe. And they do it all without bankruptcy or new loans. Done with debt as unique strategies to get you out of debt faster. But you need to hurry because some debt solutions are time sensitive. Visit donewithdebt.com and talk with one of their debt relief strategists for free. You have nothing to lose except your debt. Go to donewithdebt.com, donewithdebt.com. All right, here is the final thoughts. 1984, and this is in Confronting the Presidents. Talked about it with Sean Hannity today on his radio program, by the way. Might want to listen to that. Um, It's posted on BillOReilly.com. So Reagan is leading in the polls against Walter Mondale, okay? Uh, Because Mondale was associated with Jimmy Carter. Reagan defeated Carter in 1980. Now Reagan's running for re-election. Country's going pretty well. The debate is terrible for Ronald Reagan. Roll it. I have not believed that prayer should be introduced into an election or be a part of a political campaign or religion, uh, a part of that campaign. As a matter of fact, I think religion became a part of this campaign when Mr. Mondale's running mate said I wasn't a good Christian. So uh, it does play a part in my life. I have no hesitancy in saying so. And... uh, As I say, I don't believe that I could uh, carry on uh, unless I had a belief in a higher authority and and a belief uh, that prayers are answered. All right, so Reagan came across as halting and low energy, and all the polls showed that Mondale beat him pretty badly. So um, then there was a second debate. And Reagan won handily because he had new people come in and train him to be much more assertive in that debate. 
In the final realm, Reagan got 525 electoral votes. Mondale got 13. His home state, Missouri. Uh, Missouri. Minnesota. Okay? Popular vote, Reagan got 55 million. Mondale got 38 million. So it was a landslide. So if Donald Trump has another chance uh, to debate Kamala Harris, you should do it. But more importantly, as I said at the top of the program, Trump's got to hold a press conference. And I would own up to say, yeah, that wasn't my greatest uh, debate, but I still beat her. Trump could say that, okay? Because look at the issues. I addressed A, B, C, D. She evaded A, B, C, D. The more that Trump can engage, and not just on media that's going to kiss his butt, but you hold a press conference, everybody comes in. Because she's not going to do that. He's not going to do it. So he's got to maintain momentum because all the momentum in the Trump organization is down now. And you'll see it in the polling next week or even later on this week. You'll see it because the discombobulated people don't really pay attention. Remember, this stuff goes out on social media. That's where most people see it. And that dog and cat soundbite, that's going to lead the league. It's already leading the league. I just I went through it. Um, and, you know, it was a headline on one of these uh, political websites. Bill O'Reilly rips Donald Trump. I didn't rip Donald Trump. I mean, but they do that so people will, will, want, will go in and want, read the article. I didn't rip anybody. Okay? I, I reported the truth. That's not ripping. It's so corrupt. It just so drives me nuts. But I can't do anything about it other than present to you what really happens and why it happens. And I think we do that pretty good job of it here. So tomorrow we'll continue with this uh, debate fallout and we'll have anything new that pops up. We really appreciate you guys watching and listening to the No Spin News. I hope you check out Confronting the President, Streaking on Amazon. You'll love the book. I mean, it's, I think, my most informative book. We will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, Please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.